Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll. Ma'am Kassoon. Here. Tobin. Here. Kleiner. Here. Johnson. Here. Francois. Here. Burr. Here. Green. Here. Massey. Here. President Massey. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. You're promoting him. All right. <laughs> then I get out of my seat. <laughs> Here. Thank you. Correspondence. We have um, State Liquor Authority for a new company, the Detroit Bowling Company on 14 Cottage Street. Forward to the Police Department and Corporation Council. Cornell University for a 5K run on the property of the former Psychiatric Center campus on Saturday, April 7th, 2018. They are asking permission to have the entrances to the community campus closed. Over to Public Works Committee. That's it for correspondence. Okay. For the good of the city, if anyone would like to address the council, please step forward. You have four minutes to address the council. Um, I'm going to read a letter that was sent to uh, Andrew Cuomo. Uh, we are writing you about a matter of extreme importance to all of us and thousands of constituents, members, businesses, and individuals we represent. The proposed CPV Valley, en Valley Energy Center as it relates to Energy Highway Initiative from the initial public announcement to the last months when CPV received the final permits necessary to build this facility, the entire CPV team has conducted themselves with a rare brand of professionalism and corporate responsibility with neighbors, businesses, public officials, laborers, environmental groups, seniors, and interested citizens. The CPV team has con conducted literally hundreds of outreach meetings to brief shape, uh, stakeholders, answer questions, and answer concerns related to the project. They have been an active and responsible corporate citizen within our community. Their outreach efforts has gone well beyond what we normally witness, and as a result, the project has enjoyed impressive widespread result, uh, support, as evidenced by the signatures to this letter that has stood the time the test of time. In addition, and in accordance to your vision, encouraging intermunicipal cooperation, the city of Middletown and the town of Waywayanda has entered into an intermunicipal agreement where the town of Waywayanda will be using the city of Middletown's wastewater treatment plant treated wastewater for its cooling water needs. It will be returning the used cooled water to the same city wastewater treatment plants for the treatment prior to discharging it to the Wallkill River. When implemented, this plan will serve as a shining example of both intermunicipal cooperation and water conser conservation, serving our limited fresh water supplies for future economic development purposes throughout the entire region. Collectively, we are writing writing you to express in the strongest possible terms our desire to have you make the CPV a key component within your energy highway blueprint. In addition to the very significant environmental and economic benefits created by this project, more importantly, it, is critical. it will be a critical tool in helping address the significant electric rates increase pro increases projected to hit the lower Hudson Valley as a result of the Federal Energy Regulation Commission, a newly approved capacity zone. While it may not entirely mitigate the devastating impact this new capacity zone will have in our region and our economics through higher electronic ra electricity rates, adding CPV value to the uh, capacity mix will help push lower prices than they would otherwise would be. The proposed CPV Valley is now is an outstanding energy project that promises to deliver the precise benefits identified in the plan for the decades to come. The, uh, the project has met all the stringent regulatory requirements and enjoys an unusual strong and cohesive 
uh, cohesive support from the leaders within our community. For all these reasons, we ask you move quickly to help this project uh, reality sign Joe DeStofna. Now, none of that. That, that where was all these outreach programs? I, I, haven't, I haven't seen any except I only heard of three. Martin Harnick, Sunnyside Avenue. First of all, let me add my voice to those who said that the uh, smell in our area of the city was pretty bad yesterday morning. Um, I have to apologize for coming to this uh, fight against the CPV plant a little late. Um, but the analogy I would put forth is that uh, back in the 1980s, if my memory serves me, we became aware that a lot of the clothing we were importing from Asian nations was being manufactured in horrible conditions, often using child labor and forced labor. The United States began to enter into trade agreements with many of these nations and used diplomatic pressure to try to end this practice. Here in New York, we found that frack gas to be dangerous to our environment and we banned it. I don't understand why we'd want to encourage those people in Pennsylvania to frack gas so that we can use it. And I would hope that we would do all in our power as a city to see that this plant never comes online. Thank you. Uh, we, 9.30 yesterday morning, we walked outside to do some gardening because it was getting nicer. And I thought my neighbor's house was burning. It smelled like when our neighbor's house burned last summer. We were so alarmed by this, we called the fire department. And the fire department came, and it wasn't a house burning. It was the CPV plant. And this, you probably, everyone here saw that fog and could smell that awful smell that was making our eyes water. And my da daughter has a cough, <laughs> made it, it made it worse. And th you know, this was alarming because we could smell it and it was real. We've been against the CPV plant for, from the beginning. I've written to Joe saying, I don't want us Middletown to sell our water because we could make money because this city means nothing if we can't breathe, if we can't go for a walk, if we can't have good air. And, you know, while yesterday was very shocking because of the smell, it's even more troublesome that when we, if, if I hope they don't, switch to frack gas, maybe the smell won't be as much. But how about the carcinogens going in the air and the those chemicals that maybe we don't smell, but are still there harming us and causing problems. It just doesn't make sense. Um, you, you know, we have so much garbage that we throw away in, in even our sewage treatment plant makes methane gas, which is just burned and it, and, and it goes away. But that methane gas in Haiti at our school, we use it to cook the food for the kids. So the garbage that we produce here in Middletown could be used as fuel. It could, you know, the, the guys at the sewage treatment plant, guys and gals at the sewage treatment plant could cook their tea and, and, and food from the methane that's produced. So there's, instead of the competitive power ventures, if we can have cooperative power ventures and put solar panels on our roofs, we have so many roofs, we have so many, so much sunshine if this plant isn't around. <laughs> and then, you know, we can produce solar power, we can produce electricity in ways that don't harm our earth and keep, keep Middletown safe for our kids and our grandkids and our pets. So that's what I would like to say. Thank you very much for listening and for your hard work for everyone um, fighting this plant. For the record, would you tell us who you are and where you live? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm Maria Blonde. I live at 5 Earl Street, and that's where all the fire trucks were the other day, <laughs> yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Scott Martens, and I'm here today representing hundreds, if not thousands, of concerned citizens that were sickened by the recent events at the CPV power plant burning fuel oil as they await their pipeline, illegal pipeline, I might add, to hook up to natural gas, which of course 
um, she so eloquently put, it's just going to make it worse because then we're not even going to be able to see it or smell it. It's just going to be making us sick. Um, and I'm also representing um, Protect Orange County. Uh, we're a group, a grassroots organization that is devoted to fighting this frack gas infrastructure. And we need everybody out here to mobilize. And if we do, we can shut down this plant. Um, I'm born and raised in Middletown. I now live in Minisink. I'm a father, a husband, and I ask for you all to stand with us. People power will bring CPV down. Um, and again, in the, our neighbors in the state of Pennsylvania are being fracked to death. We've all seen the images of people's water faucets in flames, and this is the reality for thousands of people now because of these frack gas wells. This one CPV plant in our town is going to need 150 new fracked wells every single year. 150. Now, that might not be in your backyard, okay? But it's in somebody just like yours backyard because of this plant, okay? Governor Cuomo banned fracking in New York State, and Mayor DiStefano claims to be, uh, be anti-fracking. Yet, as a state, we house hundreds of miles of frac gas pipelines, hundreds of metering stations, many compressor stations, and now massive power plants run on frac gas. And as a city, Middletown is in the shadow of and facilitated the location for a huge frac gas power plant. Very early on in the process, the mayor, Mr. DiStefano, joined forces with CPV and agreed to sell gray water to the plant. Without this agreement, CPV would not have chosen this location. And that is evidenced by the fact that every CPV frack gas power plant on their own website has a similar deal with a municipality. It is a necessary component of their business to buy, to buy the water from municipality. If that had not been offered by this gentleman right here, this plant would have gone somewhere else. And that's just a fact. So this is fracking, and this is facilitating the contamination of Pennsylvania's water supply. We need to mobilize for our Protect Orange County events. The Saturday picket from 11 to noon at the power plant site, the vigil that we're going to have at Cuomo's house in Mount Kisco on the 25th, look on, the, on our website and on Facebook for it, and keep calling the DEC in Cuomo's office. They do document the number of phone calls and emails about these specific projects. And if we get enough people to physically rally, the message will be picked up by major media. This scenario has all the ingredients to go absolutely viral. It's built on corruption. It's fracked gas. It's poison. Everywhere. It's bad for our environment. We're in a climate crisis that's only going to exacerbate it. So with that amount of, of public support at, at, physically at a rally, that is too much bad publicity for either Cuomo or Mr. DiStefano here or the other elected officials who are supposed to be looking out for us to ignore. Mayor DiStefano stated that if CPV were to have a negative effect on the residents of Middletown, he would act. So I'm going to read some stuff from residents of Middletown. We were driving down Dolson Town Road today and could see the plumes settling on Middletown, a huge heavy fog. It started smelling and, it, and pretty quickly I felt dizzy. I'm usually not affected by things like that. This must be really bad. Another one, this is totally out of control. I live in Middletown by the old Horton Hospital and it stinks of diesel fuel really, really badly. I can't open the windows of my house because it stinks so bad. Your four minutes are up. I woke up to the smell filled with exhaust. My husband thought something had happened to the furnace. I felt nauseous and inside of my nose was burning. I was worried. Your four I minutes are up. I smelled overwhelming and, and awful and, and the windows were closed. And there are, there are hundreds of comments like this. So my question is, what is Mr. DiStefano going to do about it? What action is he going to take other than try to convince us that everything is okay? And you guys too, please stand up for the people that you said you would defend. And thank you for giving me a little bit of extra time. I really appreciate it. Good evening. 
My name is Joan Terrell, and I live in Warwick, so I'm a neighbor of yours. And uh, I was choking on the diesel from the CPV frac gas power plant, and that brings me here tonight. CPV is turning our county into a sacrifice zone, poisoning our bodies with every breath we take. If it's allowed to continue over the next 40 years, or even for the next one, two, or five, we'll be slowly dying, not thriving from daily exposure to deadly chemicals. Now, the leaders who brought this to us, some of you being those individuals, some of you newer, those leaders bear some responsibility for decisions made to promote and support the project. However, I understand that CPV was sold to you by a deep-pocketed global fossil fuel corporation that's masterful at greasing the levers of government power to sell their criminal enterprise, to reward cooperation with just enough local financial support to get endorsements. They do this exceedingly well, and we're not their first scam victims, and we're not their last. Right now, in rural Handy Township, Michigan, the town supervisor, Ed Alverson, on the website and in the press, is bragging in spite of some concerted uh, anxieties from his, uh, his uh, citizens about how great the upcoming uh, CPV plant, which hasn't been built yet, will be for his community's economic and job prospects. Sound familiar? 23 jobs? I ask of you leaders, and those of you especially who had a decision uh, making power and who do now, did any of you or are you now taking time to consider the wealth of available evidence uh, on the harms of frac gas power to frontline communities like this one before signing on? Or were you, who, who were able to decide in those early days in a rush to bring home the promised CPV bacon to the electorate? That's understandable, but in the absence of due diligence, you and other leaders have unfortunately brought destruction, economic stress, and eventual environmental ruin to our doors, you brought home heartbreak. Science says that CPV's odorless gas emissions will cause cancer, endocrine, cardiac, pulmonary, and neurological disease. Its methane's 100 times uh, uh, more strong as a GHG than carbon dioxide. It'll cause catastrophic uh, warming in the valley, contribute 10% to New York's climate warming emissions. The plant's energy is unneeded here and was always intended for regional and global markets, not for us. And our current energy bills now include a monthly surcharge to pay for costs for the plant. We're paying for our own destruction. The Pococal trial in New York exposed hundreds of thousands of dollars in CPV bribes to state officials to move the project forward. CPV recognized that its project couldn't win approval on merits, so they gamed the permitting process and appealed to politicians' greed and ambition. Uh, holding political office doesn't require the skills of true leadership. Great leadership requires thoughtful decision-making, vision, aptitude for analysis, empathy, compassion, and courage against the lures of uh, unbridled power and money. These are not quaint notions. These are strengths in our age that save lives, elevate the human condition, and create opportunities for people that aren't purchased with the lives of the many to make profits for the few. Colin Powell has said, quote, leadership is solving problems. The day your soldiers stop bringing you their problems is the day you have stopped leading them. They have either lost confidence that you can help or concluded that you do not care, and either case is a failure of leadership, end quote. Middletown, Orange County, we have a problem. We are bringing a problem to you. We need you to do as Mayor Stefano promised and speak and act in unity with us to stop the project. As Powell says, if you do not lead, we will know you do not care. And courage is defined as strength in the face of pain and grief. My courage brings me here tonight and these others, I'm sure, in the face of our pain and grief at that plume and what it means. We do remind you, and I remind you sincerely, that your past support for this deadly plant does not have to define your future actions. We will embrace your change of attitude. We all learn. And when we do, we do better. Good leaders do better. Do better. Stop CPV. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Dietrich, 14 Chestnut Street. Um, basically, I'm here to ask you guys to start calling the DEC. I called, if you know nothing else about me, I am persistent. I don't stop. I called the DEC five times today. And I get very polite people. They're very nice. And they keep telling me, yes, we're doing, we've gotten complaints. Yes, yes, yes. And today the gentleman said, we do have a report, but I can't give it to you. I have to get permission to give it to you. Well, I'm imploring you guys. They'll give it to you. They won't give it to me. So I am asking you as my elected officials to tell me what I'm breathing. 
Thank you very much. How you all doing today? I'm uh, San Piquias. I work, live over on Tunnel Drive in Fourth Ward. How you all doing today? Smiles, finally. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is, this is community and democracy at its best. Um, I'm going to come at the CPP issue a little different stance. Um, I am an environmentalist also, but my concern is safety, security. Um, I'm sure if that plant is ever a disaster, not unlike the Killeen power plant in Milltown, Connecticut in 2010 that exploded also, if you go look at it and on, on, uh, Google it, um, what happens with our fire company, with our police officers? Because you know they're going to respond to that. And you know there's an ammonia tank on that. Um, my prior history, I'm a prior medic in the Air Force for many years. I'm also a trauma nurse with just medicine. I weren't working in burning it. And let me tell you, ammonia gas, when it, when it explodes, when it hits you, it kills you. I don't know. I fear for my, our fire department and our police officers responding to that if they're downwind. Yeah. I really do. I don't know if they're properly equipped, if they have proper training. I, I, this whole thing with Prococo and the whole pay to play stuff, there are so many more questions and answers right now with this entire project. And I'm fearing for safety. Even when you go now also with the new EPA under the current administration, they have literally gutted all regulations. We don't really know or may not ever know what comes out of those stacks. Why? Because now these companies have been told, don't look, don't tell. That's a problem. I moved here, I moved back here. I made a, an effort, I was from, uh, after my service in the military, I come back here in 2007. Unfortunately, I can't go backwards. Um, and what happened in the past, maybe I was too busy with my 60 hour work week, <laughs> so I couldn't do that. But that's why we like to all you guys to watch out for us too. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And that's my only concern. I, when, and I'm not, I don't want to be called, some of us, I always hear the term, the crazies. I don't like that term. And let me tell you why. Because in the first Gulf War, a bunch of our troops told people, you're crazy. We said, something's wrong with the air. Something's wrong. And guess what? Gulf War Syndrome. I had friends of mine die. Trade towers. I volunteered. Went down trade towers. Guess what? The air is OK. We're not crazies. Question everything for our families. I have two little girls. I spent 20 years going to Mop 4 gear and chemical warfare stuff for my girls to have lived through it now, too. It's just not right. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Ray Ott. I live in 7 Lexington Way. Our family's story started here in 2005. When uh, my son was a year old, we moved into Wickham. And even starting before that, me and my wife met at SUNY Orange. Our whole story has been Middletown. And I thought going forward it was going to be from now on. And for the first time in 13 years, that's in question. I'm living in a condo now after I lived in workforce housing on Way Way Onda, right next to where the plant was being built. I watched it being erected, questioning why something that massive was next to so many low-income families. So many single moms who are just trying to make it by. So many families who are just trying to get up. I finally made it to a condo onto the hill, right? That hill happens to face south. And directly due south of me, at my eye level, is the stack of the CPV power plant. And when I walk out on my deck on Saturday morning to see if the birds are out because it's warm, I get hit with a plume of smoke. And that's fine because they're testing diesel. And I get that. I get that. It's a testing phase. I'm also told that it will be odorless once we switch to gas. Carbon monoxide is odorless. And it is deadly. Saying something is odorless is not reassuring. Yeah. It is not. That is not. <laughs> I want to know what it is. I want to know what's coming out, and I want to know what's going to settle in the parking lot where the kids play basketball. Because that's what it did. I wasn't worried about this. I really trusted everybody here. I really gave everyone the benefit of the doubt. I'm not a protester. 
I'm just a guy here with his two kids and his wife. And I want my life in Middletown. I want my nice parking lot. I want the nice the trail going in. And I want to be able to walk around and enjoy what we're building together. Because that's what we've been doing. We've all been doing that. We've all been into that. Let's not ruin it with this one thing because a billion dollars rolled into town. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cy Dibble, uh, 61 Anthony Street, City of Middletown, uh, Common Council, Mayor. Uh, one year ago, I experienced this right next to my house with the city's uh, help and the police department. They uh, removed a situation that was uh, severe, as some of you can remember, where they, uh, a piece of equipment was billing uh, diesel fumes right into my home. Uh, of course, the kid was off uh, um, for the holiday this past Monday, and I got a scare call again, uh, one year uh, to the day where uh, my mother-in-law states that there was an awful smell of diesel fumes outside, so they went back inside and uh, kind of choked me up a little bit because I, I just thought it was this contractor that was removed uh, from the property. Um, it, it turns out that the, the diesel smell was from the power plant, and uh, I, at this point in time, n no one in the area had any control over this. This was some company uh, testing or whatever they were doing, um, my question to uh, um, the Common Council of the Mayor is uh, can, can we pause that because that doesn't seem like that was normal, just like the, the contract of building the smoke into my private home before. It's just now that it's affecting the rest of my uh, fellow uh, residents of the area. I uh, beg you guys to take a close look at this because it, it's, it's not very uh, uh, healthy for any of us to, to experience that, uh, me again, and, and or any of the residents in Middletown, uh, especially with that diesel, that I'm aware of what took place before. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Good evening. Vince Crescenzo, Watkins Avenue, Second Ward. Um, I'm here to give you an update on the uh, superintendent search, so I'm representing the Middletown Board of Education tonight. Don't have a lot to tell you. The uh, focus groups went very, very well. We got a lot of good insight. Um, all that information went to uh, Dr. Christman, our headhunter uh, up in Buffalo, and he's putting it together now. Um, he's already, oh, actually we have out uh, ads in the superintendent periodicals that they normally read. There's going to be two in our local paper, and um, we, we're sending out flyers also. So at this time, Dr. Christman's putting all this information together, which is voluminous. It's, I don't know how he's going to do it. And um, that sets up our criteria for what we want to look for in a superintendent. So he'll uh, coalesce all that stuff, send it back to us, we'll look it over, and then he'll start um, sending us, um, not the f applicants physically, but their, their uh, vitae, uh, their resumes and what have you, and we'll look through that. But the ultimate goal, obviously, is for uh, Dr. Christman to send us five finalists who will interview and make a decision from there. And if that doesn't work, we'll start the process over again. But so far, so good. It's running very, very smoothly. Uh, we're happy with, uh, and again, thank you for the folks that, from this group, that were part of the focus group. Uh, it was a very positive uh, experience for us. We learned a lot. And um, that's it. So hopefully, um, within the next three to four weeks, we'll have something much more positive to, uh, not positive, but much more concrete to add to the discussion. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the council? Hi, Bob Dietrich, 14 Chestnut Street. Uh, I'm going to change the topic a little bit. New York State has the fourth most stringent gun laws in the nation, which is very positive, just behind California, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. It is still not strong enough. As a city, can we make a statement, a law, or a policy to make us a leader 
and gun control. This past weekend, an event held not very far from our city offered an AR-15 as a raffle prize, as a raffle prize, you know, a week after we saw the massacre of children. Can we at the least ban semi-automatic weapons in our city, make some sort of statement, okay, so that in this issue we can be a leader? Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Melanie Haynes. I want to say hello to everyone that is my neighbor, my classmate, my colleagues, my old teachers, all of these people from Middletown that have been a part of my whole life. I've lived my entire life in Middletown except for when I was in college. Um, I was not expecting to speak. Many people were more eloquent. Mr. Harnick was one of them. Um, my impression of being leaders and being upworthy citizens in our society is to learn what's right and then to do what's right. And if it can be better, to make it better. And I think that that follows suit on almost every topic that's been brought up today from our environment and managing our health, managing our gun laws and our society in terms of our environment and our health. It seems to me that that's number one priority in everything that we do. If we can make our air better, we should be. If we can avoid having a fracked gas plant where we can't even produce the gas in our own state, if we can't transport it safely without having risks of spills and leaks into our wetlands, into our healthy environments, then we may need to consider that another alternative is better. Maybe solar panels are not where they need to be yet, but if we don't invest in them and continue to put research towards that, we won't make process in that direction. I bought a Prius. I have cursed myself many times for it. And at the same time, I would buy another Prius because that was putting things in the direction that they need to go. We need to keep working on those technologies, keep investing in those technologies, and make progress in that direction. If we can do better, we do better. We find the way to make progress, and we don't backtrack. We go forward, always forward, and don't look back. Thank you. Anyone else? Rhoda Mack, Orange County. I just want to bring this back to the CPV power plant, and all of the eloquent, informative things you've heard. And I just want to say, what are you guys going to do? <laughs> Good evening. I'm Greg Winter. I grew up here in Middletown. Joe knows me. Jerry knows me. I spent most of my life on 55 Bedford Avenue, and I feel really sad for Middletown that it's going to get dumped on. Uh, there's nothing you can do about it unless you can raise cane. I don't know how you're going to do that, but I hope you can. And, you know, growing up here and coming back here, and I live in Way Beyond, and I must apologize for my town, only for me. I fought it over there. I wrote to the planning board. I said, this is ridiculous. I was so angry, and having, being an ex-football player, I had to calm myself down so I didn't punch somebody out when I saw that union sign. And I do not have anything against union contracts. And I saw that union sign say, we are your neighbors. And I thought, really? You're coming in here with a gas frack power plant almost a billion dollars. This is crazy. This is really crazy. And you know the wind. I wrote it in my uh, letter to the planning board. You know, you had it 10 days to respond. I said, Middletown is within the blast zone. Menacing schools were in the blast zone. Five mile radius. If something happens, the only school in Menacing that is out of it is, is Otisville. 
So this is really serious. This is not something we can take lightly. You know, we've been overrun by a major corporation here. And I, you know, I live about a mile from it, and I got a whiff of it, and I got a headache the other day when the wind blew my way. So this is not good. So think deeply about it. If you can do something, I would appreciate it. Being a former Middletown resident, grew up here, went to school here, graduated here, went to Orange County here, went in the service, came out in 1970, went back to college, got my grades up, transferred down to a nice college in West Virginia, had wonderful well water. I don't have that here, but what can you do? Anyway, I hope you take uh, deep consideration of this problem. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, uh, Merritt Winter from uh, Lake Avenue. Uh, I'm back in the uh, business of uh, recruiting firefighters for the uh, Middletown Fire Department. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Middletown is a combination department. We have our paid personnel and we have our officers and firefighters, our volunteer. So um, what I'd like to offer uh, is a program where we're going to be contacting, you know, having work details at a lot of the public events over this warm, warm weather. Um, some of that's a lot, a lot of that actually is in the planning stage right now. Uh, what I'd like to do is offer uh, my home phone uh, with a machine on it. So if you really want it, are interested and you'd like to talk about what, it, what we can offer, what we uh, ask for duty, uh, my number is 342-3465. There's a machine on it. I'll reply to you if you give me a return number. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor. Good evening, and I welcome um, all the folks who came here this evening to give their input on the project. Uh, first, let me begin with uh, Mr. Martens is correct that in my state of the city about, I believe it was on February 2nd, that I did say once this project, or if this project negatively impacts the city of Middletown, that the city of Middletown would act. For those who are watching and that would get the misperception that this is a Middletown project, it is not. This project is in the town of Walkhill, our town of Wayweyanda, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so Middletown's participation uh, I think it deserves a little history um, of the project because many people who have called, many of the calls that I've taken, um, people aren't familiar with the history of the project. They think that this is something that just came up within the last year or so and received no public scrutiny. First, to those in the town of Waukee who live by the Orange Plaza Mall um, who have called about the RSR plant that has a similar plume at a lead factory. That is not what this project is about. This is a project on the south end of the city. Uh, one lady sent me pictures of RSR with the plume, blaming it once again on Middletown. And I tried to explain to her, ma'am, that is not in the city of Middletown. And so that was the argument. Similar to this plant. <clears throat> this plant is not in the city of Middletown. Now, we do have some of our uh, uh, plants that do similar things. Uh, we all are familiar with the odor from Pollux or Bell flavor for many, many years that we've had com complaints from surrounding communities about the odor here in the city of Middletown and what are you doing about it. We've also had complaints about some of the um, uh, discharge out of the plastic plant that's been there for many, many years on Dolson Avenue. It's important to note that none of those communities, nor we, have the legal right to go into another community and tell them what they have to do. New York State is a home rule state when it comes to planning, um, planning boards, just like Middletown is a home rule city. So when our planning board makes a determination to open the Equilibrium Brewery back here, 
Wei Wuyan can give input, Wok Yu can give input if they so choose, but they're not the determining body. So let's start with the history. This project actually began under a previous name and at a different location, but along that same southeast, southern part of the city corridor. It was called Calpine. Back in 2003, there was a preliminary agreement with the city of Middletown to do something similar or to provide them with potable water at the time. Um, so there was both discussions. That project then died, and around 2005, the Calpine project became the, um, uh, the CPV project. 2005, 2006, there was some talk about it. In 2008, uh, the project was a reality. It became, um, there was a full environmental um, um, assessment form submitted to the town of Wei Wuyan to Plain and Board. In 2009, Orange Environment intervened and made recommendations. Um, and that was in February of 2009. Uh, I mean, in April of 2009, in February of 2009, the Wayanda Town Planning Board had a, issued a draft environmental uh, report. Uh, back in 2013, CPV in the city entered into the water agreement that these folks are now referring to. Five years ago, uh, they entered into the agreement. The agreement was first introduced back in 2008. So there are many, many uh, years of public discussion, and I want to thank Mr. Fernandez for reading that letter because the letter is correct in facts. There were over 100 public meetings on these. No. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let him speak. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking now. If you let me finish. That's the representation of CPV. I know I attended several meetings on this. Many of the people who spoke tonight, I didn't see at those meetings. Mr. Winter says he, uh, he, he sent a letter, and that's fine. But you got to understand is that this is not a Middletown project. And any attempt to try to make this a Middletown project by the, some of the people who spoke is just wrong. Mr. Martens, when he first came here, I asked him, have you gone to your own township and raised these concerns? No. Many of the people have never raised any concern with the own community that they live in. Warwick is here tonight. Is Warwick doing something about this? The air doesn't stop here. Is Goshen doing something about this? Are all these other communities, are all these other communities taking some kind of action? What they are looking for us to do is they're looking for the city of Middletown who entered into a legal agreement five years ago to jeopardize the financial future of the city of Middletown by breaking a contract. Yes. 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 Well, I can, first of all, I wasn't rude to any of you. I sat and I listened to everything each one of you had to say. This whole thing is rude. Are you serious? We only got four this is enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If the next time, if you get out of line, I'm going to ask the officer to remove you. Stop. I'm, I'm stepping out. I'm stepping out so I don't. Because this whole thing is out of line. Okay? Out of line. Yeah, it is. Cut the water. It's our water. Cut it. And then there's no plan. Done. It's a foolish statement. I don't think any homeowner in this city would like the city of Middletown to jeopardize them losing their home for, for your what this gentleman has to say. Now, let's go back to the 2012 findings of the, these are the findings of the Town of Way Beyond the Planning Board, not the City of Middletown Planning Board, not the City of Middletown Common Council. They talk about the clean burning natural gas fuel. Whether it's clean burning or not, that's not a determination made by anybody in this body. That's a determination made by them in the Town of Way Beyond according to federal and state laws. They confirm that the, uh, the generation facilities, this, is, this was the comments of the Town of Wayweyanda Planning Board, that the expansion um, of the facilities has improved New York's air quality while reducing overall costs for the consumer. That's some of the people that spoke here tonight live in the Town of Wayweyanda. Where were you at the Town of Wayweyanda Planning Board Why does that when, they, when they made, I, I'm, I'm going to say it again. The next time you talk, you're leaving.
there are findings made by the town of Weiwayanda, not the city of Middletown, that impact whether this project moved forward or not. This was not a done deal. What Middletown's involvement is, whether you like it or not, was we made the project greener. This project was moving forward based on a supply of water which was available to CPV at the site. Uh, they also, the town of Weiwayanda has a 200,000 gallon a day agreement with the city of Middletown. So a portion of that water could have even come from the city of Middletown under an agreement from 25 years ago. So as we move forward with the, with the project, the comments that are made are very inappropriate about what their expectations are. I, heard, I think you heard from some of the shout outs here is they don't care. I understand that what happened yesterday is unacceptable to us in the city of Middletown. What happened with the smoke, with the odor, with the, uh, uh, the length of time that it was here also were unacceptable. I got on the phone immediately with Jacob, our commissioner of public works, our council president, even Mr. Massey joined us in, in, the, in a conference call to see what we are going to do, how we're going to address this. So we did immediately call CPV, brought them to the sites that we thought were the high priorities based on um, the volume of calls. And CB, CPV, uh, their consultant, did admit that, and I guess they had to admit because the visual was there, the pictures are there, and we witnessed firsthand the odor was there, that there was a problem yesterday. They gave me a technical answer about the plant not meeting 190 degrees yesterday, that the atmospheric pressure wasn't releasing because of the weather conditions, and that they weren't producing enough in the test power. That's the rationale for what happened yesterday. So we said to them yesterday, None of that is acceptable, and you need to operate your plant where it's going to meet the EPA standards. Keep in mind that they do have 180 days to come in compliance. We asked them this morning for, uh, and by the way, the call that we, um, uh, we, had, we had met in person with CPV. Uh, we also had Kay, uh, Kate Sherlock of the town of Weyweyanda there. Uh, we also had Bron Morusky a councilman from the town of Weyweyanda there, and John Cole, or Dave Cole, I'm sorry, uh, who, who I believe is here tonight uh, from the Weyweyanda Town Board, was also present um, on the, he was on the self, I mean, on, on telephone conference call. So we met with uh, CPV consultants, CPV, the operators of the plant, and some administrators within the CPV operation. We had many questions about how do we avoid what happened today? What is the timeline? What are people breathing? What is the, um, um, what can be done to prevent the odor? And of course the initial response is that this is the commissioning process of the plant and whether we like it or not, or they like it or not, their response is that the odor issue primarily and some of the discharge issue primarily is a result of the fact that they had to fire the plant up on oil or diesel versus natural gas. That when the plant is operational under natural gas, that this will not be happening. And I think you even heard some of the people here tonight, and I'm not going to get into the fracking argument. That's not, a, um, that's not something Middletown is um, in, in a position to make an argument about the legal right of a company to use natural gas from Pennsylvania. That's, that's not, my, um, not within my purview. But, so that was, that was what they had said at the meeting is that we have a, um, we, we recognize we have a problem, we had a problem yesterday, and we can work with you to try to mitigate the problem during this testing period. We told them this, and I specifically questioned them, is what was the, thought process behind firing up the plant while you, with the use of diesel fuel, rather than waiting for the litigation to commence or to finish and use the natural gas, which would have avoided 
not only the inconvenience and the health issues that it generated with the, um, uh, with the steam blows and the release, but also from a CPV perspective, the bad PR that came along with it, that they, they were becoming everything people said they were in their first opportunity to show that they were different than other people um, and other corporations. They would not give me an assurance that, the, uh, that they would stop doing the testing. They said they had a schedule of testing to go through. Um, we pushed them a little bit further, but we could not get a commitment on them. We then wanted to know what is coming out of those stacks. We know that it's, uh, most of the plume is steam vapor. It's combined with a diesel discharge, which creates the odor, but we want to know what's coming out. And they were unable to provide that documentation. We then advised them that the city would retain the services of a engineering firm as we move forward to monitor the CPV process, to monitor their DEC and EPA reports that will be filed, and that we insisted, and Weiwianda also concurred, that they must um, do testing during this interim period so that we know what our people here and people in the whole area of Orange County uh, from here to as far as the plume goes when it's, uh, when it's out there, what people are breathing in during this interim period. So we um, will be moving. We spoke with CDM. CDM has some familiarity with the project because back in 2008, they were hired to do the environmental review on the, um, um, uh, the water taking and the gray water permit. So they, uh, uh, CDM will be coming on board with air experts and they will be retained by the city and paid by the city to monitor the project as we move forward. We are not, and it's unrealistic, to expect the city to intervene in a project that is not in the city of Middletown, that we have a contractual relationship with to provide a certain service that we have no authority over when it comes to the regulatory authority, which is granted to Weiwianda, um, uh, the DEC and the EPA, to Middletown unilaterally put a bullet to our head and shoot ourselves. That's not going to happen. So how we move forward on a realistic measure is, is the important part. So the commitments that we did get from uh, CPV today was they will implement an air monitoring plan, something that they did not have in place as of today during this test period. Uh, they are finalizing the details of that plan and will implement the plan as quickly as possible. And they expected to start the air monitoring this afternoon or this evening. Uh, they also, we also want to know how much more of this we have. And uh, today, they were restarting one of the two units uh, for a duration of eight hours. Um, they planned to bring the plant up to 30 MW much quicker, which apparently dissipates uh, the, uh, um, both the odor issue and the plume issue, depending on how cold it is outside. Um, all technical stuff that... Uh, I'm really not too familiar with, but uh, we did have Jacob there also, and we, we did con, con, um, uh, speak with CPV. I mean, with our CDM, with our consulting engineers. They've agreed to reach out not only to Middletown and to Weiwianda, but to, on a daily basis and possibly twice daily, update the public with some kind of public notice um, that will be broadcast by each community as they so choose. So Middletown obviously will have postings on our website, on our social media, and our channel 20. Um, a big commitment was that once their activities are complete on fuel oil, uh, they do not anticipate much runtime on fuel oil as we await natural gas. What we found out in the process and the discussions today is that 30 days is not 30 days when you can run a plant such as this. That 30 days means 24, 720 hours versus 30 days that each turbine or each uh, uh, unit each can run 720 hours 
independently of oil. I mean, independent of the natural gas per year. Um, that during this process, possibly, and that will be something that our consultants will, will talk, but CPV is committed to it, is that they could potentially go for a longer period of time on fuel oil until the plant is commissioned, totally commissioned, or there's some type of formula that didn't make sense to us and felt that it was very misleading during, during the environmentals. They've agreed that is not going to happen. So that uh, when the cleaning process is done and a plant is commissioned, that if the natural gas litigation is not resolved by then, that they will shut the plant down, they will not operate the plant on fuel, even if they are entitled to by law to operate the fuel on, uh, on diesel fuel. They have given us a schedule of, uh, there, there's two different types of discharge coming from the plant. One is what they call the, the steam blows, which is the lower one, uh, which is coming out the lower, uh, the lower stacks. Um, they will be ending hopefully within the next two weeks. The larger stacks is the diesel discharge, which of course creates the odor. Um, we will be posting as soon as the final schedule is up. Uh, they gave us a long-term plan that I will read, um, but I believe it's subject to some modification by them. They will start the uh, unit on 224 above 30 MW, and the estimated duration is two to three days. It depends on how, clean, how fast they're able to clean the, uh, the piping. After completion of both units, singular blows be, uh, begin, combined units, continuous blows, estimated for a duration of two to three days. And after completion of the steam blows, the plant will be shut down for two to two and a half weeks to remove temporary piping and restore the plant to its final configuration. They will then restart the units to do the full final load tuning and testing, and the estimated duration of that is two to three weeks. Upon completion of the final tuning and testing, the units will be off with little likelihood of being restarted on fuel oil. We want little likelihood to be no likelihood, and we will push with our consultants and, uh, to make sure that happens. CPV is working to finish its commissioning of the units in the safest and shortest amount of time possible. That's their representation, not ours. So, in keeping with what I said on February 2nd, we are taking action when the city of Middletown has been impacted. I would encourage people to read the environmentals that have been submitted for the past five, 10, 15 years, to review these reports, to review the orange environment report that was submitted to the board. And, and, and these are the things that we're listening to back at the time. I wasn't involved um, during the period of, of 05 through 09, but, um, but the project did become ours. And I know that the members of the council that are here this evening, with the exception of Sparrow, Andrew, and Jude, I believe all voted in, in favor of this project. And I think in Paul, I don't think Paul, you, you weren't here during the, you weren't here in 13. Yeah. Uh, we joined every labor leader, every business leader. We joined the town of Walkill that if this project is everything they say it's going to be, and all the environmental protections are put in place, the EPA, the DEC, the town of Wayweyanda, Orange County Health Department, anyone involved in this, po in this project, that Middletown would make the project greener by providing them with treated sewage rather than asking them to take hundreds of thousands of gallons of groundwater a day from the, uh, from the surrounding aquifers. That is the limit of Middletown's involvement besides myself and others attending those public meetings and listening to what the project is at the time that it was being proposed. To come here and blame the city of Middletown for this project is wrong. I understand I got big shoulders and a lot of big things, but, uh, but the uh, big belly too, I know Massey. But the idea that this has become an anti-Middletown thing is disturbing, especially, and I, I don't know if Mr. Martens 
as of this moment yet, has gone to the menacing board where he lives, asked them to pass a resolution, asked them to intervene. I don't know if they've gone to Weyanda and asked them to do what Middletown is doing to protect her citizens. The lady from Warwick, go to your town board. If you want to chip in with the city of Middletown, any of the surrounding communities, to monitor this operation, we would welcome the cooperation of everyone who is impacted. But my request to the council is going to be to fund it regardless of who participates. CDM is a reputable firm, a national firm, with an extensive background in areas such as this. And we will be bringing them on. We had discussions with them today. Uh, we are bringing them on immediately to do what's in the best interest of the city of Middletown residents, and that is protect the air that they breathe and to uh, protect the city residents from any negative impacts from this project, just like we would do with RSR, or just like a surrounding community would do with us when it comes to some of our plants that have discharge, like um, uh, the, the plant over on, on Washington Street. Um, so there, there are things that none of us do 100% right, but we want to make sure that we take the appropriate steps to protect our residents. I told you we would do it. I'm asking the council to fund it. Uh, we will go to the Board of Estimate at the next meeting. We've already hired the, the firm in anticipation of your um, approval, and we are ready to move forward. And I welcome all of the people here to go to their boards and ask them to pass resolutions to join Middletown in monitoring the CPV plant. And as soon as they do that, um, I, I think then we have some uh, a bigger group of people to make sure that this plant is everything they said it would be. And I know some people have different issues, and those are the fracking issues in Pennsylvania. Those aren't our issues. Um, the, uh, they could have been way beyond the issues if they wanted to when the planning board or when they approved the project, but apparently they weren't. But the, uh, we're going to move forward. We're going to make sure that what happened the other day doesn't happen again. If it does happen again, we will have a consultant right on the spot to contact the DEC, EPA, and we will be in contact with them also as we move forward monitoring. I don't know what else we can do. We're open for ideas um, without jeopardizing the, uh, um, the city's financial status. Um, I, I, I don't uh, know anything else that we could do, but I'll open ideas to the board too. So you have any questions? Only yes, Johnson. sir. Um, I have two questions. I just want to be clear with this monitoring program that the results of these tests will be available on our website on real time. Is that correct? That well, the CPV monitoring. I mean, the CPV. Uh, we don't know what that what the extent of CPV's monitoring is going to be. I meant our monitoring. Our monitoring will be public information, absolutely. Real time. In uh, as real as it, once it's confirmed. I don't I don't know how long it takes to for them to take a field test or whatever test they're doing. Um, to evaluate uh, the test results. Whatever time it is, as soon as we're able to put them up, we will put them up. And my second question, you mentioned that Weyanda or representatives were party to the conversation this morning. Yes. Are you aware of Weyanda taking any action similar to what we are proposing for as monitoring air quality? I'm not aware of any, but we certainly would welcome their participation in the cost and, and the possibility of expanding the services of CDM to monitor the plant. So uh, there's no breathe, there's there's no one community that needs to monitor this air. this facility. It's air. So if Weyanda or Warwick or Minisink, I hope all the they bring the passion and enthusiasm that they brought here to the body that is not the body that made this decision to bring the plant there. I hope they bring it to their own town boards because they're breathing that same air and say, "Hey, let's join in consortium with Middletown." and Weyanda or whatever communities to bring on this firm and to do the monitoring that is necessary to ensure that not only Middletown people are being protected, but also people here in Orange County. So I would welcome that enthusiasm and that um, participation. Yes, sir, Sparrow. Uh, Mayor, uh, is the DEC monitoring? Because uh, I called this weekend and nope, there was an answer machine. Uh, they said they send people down, but I'm not sure if they're yeah. actually 
monitoring. My understanding of the monitoring process is that there was nothing in the stacks that is testing air quality at this point. They are doing, they have a consultant that's doing uh, field work, um, including uh, just a nose test, for example, to see where the odors are. Uh, that's my understanding. That's why we insisted, and, and don't forget, we, we don't have the ability to insist, by the way, but we insisted with Way Beyond at the meeting today that this be part of the process. CPV agreed as of today to implement air monitoring immediately uh, during this test period. Um, apparently, the laws apply uh, are differently are applied differently during a test period rather than a period after commission. Um, so that during this test period, we insisted, John Cole is here, John was on, or Dave Coy, I don't know why I keep calling you John, um, was on the phone um, and other, two other representatives away we onto. We all insisted that CPV undertake some type of air monitoring. Whether that's an acceptable form that they're proposing, we don't yet, know yet because we haven't seen it. But as soon as we do, our engineers will be talking to them to tell them what our demands would be for monitoring during this process. Now, if we make certain demands of monitoring and they don't meet it, is um, some type of other action um, possible? Absolutely, absolutely. That we uh, will do what is necessary from our perspective to protect our residents. So hopefully CPV will be cooperative and we'll follow through with what they said, that air monitoring will begin today. Um, we will then make those results as soon as they're available for us and confirmed by our consultant, then uh, we'll make them available to the public. Transparency is the best issue here, especially over the next few weeks when people are going to continue to see some plumes. Uh, so uh, the transparency is going to be very important here. Yes, Kate. Um, you mentioned that CBV agreed to shut the plant down after commissioning if the natural gas is not available. Correct. Do we have any timeline on how long until commissioning, or is that an ambiguous? They expect that this testing period will be done by, I believe it was early April, when you know they got a two-and-a-half-week period that they're down. and blah, blah. I think everything will be done by early April. Um, I asked them specifically, do they expect any timeline on when their court case will be resolved, and they said no. So, um, so the court case will drive, obviously, will drive the, uh, their full opening. So right now, they are not, from, and we have it in writing, with, with the exception of that one word, uh, that uh, they will not operate fully, or they won't operate at all. They, and they, they use the term today, they will shut down operations after this period. Thank you. Well, Jude? Yes, will we end up have a, a direct number where the resident could call them if, if, if they have any concerns instead of calling us? Well, I don't mind them calling, um, calling my office. And uh, what we can do, uh, we can post, and I don't know if we've already done it or not, the EPA and the DEC numbers. That is the best way to get a, their point across, is to uh, call the DEC and the EPA and, and log their complaints with them. Uh, they do a mapping of the complaints, and they'll they'll do a follow up on it. So they are the regulatory agencies. Uh, we are not the regulatory body. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions? Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Remarks of the department heads. Economic development. <coughs> Maria. Thank you, Maria. DPW Commissioner. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, before you tonight, uh, there are a couple of resolutions, which is to accept the grant $128,000 for GIS mapping of our storm sewer and uh, system and authorize the mayor to sign the same. That will, will come in with a 25% local match requirement. Another resolution also is to accept the grant of uh, $3 million to purchase property upstream of Kench Reservoir in order to protect our raw water sources. And that will require another 25% uh, local match. Um, also a reminder uh, for the public, please, we have the grant for uh, lead 
water service replacement. Many of you have been calling us. Please, all of you call us, even if you, have, if you don't have lead, uh, lead uh, water service, if it's brass or any other type of material other than copper, call us, please. We'll send people over there to verify it. We're trying to finalize our list. So please, time is of the essence, so we don't, so we can utilize our grant. Um, again, please, please call us. It's very important. Three four three three one six nine DPW. Um, we opened bids back in um, last week for uh, Maple uh, Maple Avenue drainage project and West Main Street drainage projects, and we expect to make a recommendation. The bids were ca they came in within the estimate. We are very happy with that. It's all grant money. Um, and um, uh, we expect to have a resolution before you next common council meeting to award the bid so we can start construction. Thank you, Jason. I just had one question with respect to the GIS mapping. Yes, sir. When we, uh, when we were at the open house for the school on community campus, there was an informal conversation about some of the programs that they have with their students. Was there any uh, follow-up and any possible collaboration with that, or that was just a conversation of that evening? Yeah, that was a conversation. This one is uh, very, very involved uh, so, uh, software that we will be using. We have CDM that's going to be working with us, CDM Smith, working with us to develop this uh, GIS mapping. And uh, it has, it's more than mapping also. It does have, it's ha it has a modeling capability in there, meaning it will, base on the cross-sectional area and the slope of a given pipe, or uh, structure will be able to figure out the, the uh, uh, flow through it, how much maximum flow can happen. And that will be the backbone for our water GIS mapping system and the uh, wastewater uh, collection system as well. So it's really very, very involved, and that's, it requires a specialty, specialty contractor, a specialty engineering firm with the knowledge and capability to do this. It's not the matter of uh, running around with the with a GPS locator in there on top of a catch basin or a manhole and this and that. that. That can easily be done. You can do it even in Google mapping. It's all the modeling and the computer uh, work that will take place. And say, I'm not saying that the college cannot do it, but this is something that, you know, this is what these people do day in and day out Thank with you. the latest technology. Yeah. Commissioner, uh, how are we doing with uh, potholes, filling them in? Are we are we ready? Because we have some doozies around town. No, we we are addressing them. As you know, we use we use cold patch because the hot asphalt is not available, ready to available for us. We pick and choose. Like tomorrow, we have a truck going to New Jersey to bring in a black uh, hot asphalt or black top, and that is the permanence of the cold patch. Our guys, it's not that it's not like they're sleeping on the job. They're not treating it. You treat it, but the cold patch is if you have rain event or any precipitation in there, car drives over it, it will have a pumping action in there or heaving action that will take place because of the freezing weather, because of the time of the year we're in, and we end up losing it all over the place. And we have more complaints than cold patch spread all over the place than uh, potholes. But we try to mark them. This is the season for it. We regret it. We apologize. For, for any inconvenience, and then uh, I know the council president's son, he got hit with one of the potholes, he lost his tire. So uh, we had to, obviously we had to give it special attention, but, uh, but no, we, no, we do apologize and regret that. But tomorrow we're getting a truck going to New Jersey, and we've been doing it, we've been doing that, weather permitting. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Yes, Commissioner. The ADA project, uh, last time we had a, a conversation about that, uh, where are we right now? The, okay, that's the uh, $2.6 million grant Correct. that we received for the curbs and sidewalks, new curbs and sidewalks uh, throughout the city and on Dolson Avenue. That's the one you're referring to. Correct. Yeah, we, we, we hired the, we, uh, you guys voted to hire the engineering firm uh, to do the project. You appropriated the fund. And now it's before the DOT office to give us their blessing to hire the engineer. And that applies for the uh, traffic operation uh, project as well, which is replacing all the uh, uh, in signalized intersections with the uh, pedestrian crossing that is ADA uh, compliance. And um, that's about uh, altogether around $7 million is going to be done in two stages. And uh, again, you guys voted, and we thank you very much. Uh, for for uh, to vote to hire the engineer for it, 
and that's before the DOT as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. Fire Chief. Good evening. Um, the Chief wanted me to say that we responded to 111 alarms in January, which is quite high, but we had a lot of broken water pipes, and that was the majority of the calls. We did have one three-alarm fire on 80 Wisner Avenue, which is a commercial property, um, no injuries, um, but the business did sustain uh, significant damage. There is two resolutions for, uh, before you guys tonight. One is for a shed for Central Firehouse. The other one is to replace Engine 1 and the tools and equipment. We hope we can get your support. That's it. Question for the Chief. Thank you, Chief. City Treasurer. I have nothing tonight unless anybody has any questions. Any questions for Don? Thank you, Don. Please, Chief. Good evening. I also have nothing for tonight unless you have a question for me. Any question for the Police Chief? Alden Green. Yes. Thanks. Um, with uh, Nixle coming in, are we seeing any uh, significant numbers of people signing up? Or it's, it's very new, I get it, but, you know. I it is very it's new. Um, we are putting it out on social media. We do have a small group that has already subscribed. Um, we'll try to put some additional stuff out uh, related to this, and hopefully citywide we start using it a little bit more. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Superintendent of Recreation. A couple quick announcements quick tonight. Um, the Mayor's Youth Council will be holding a blood drive on February 28th from 3 to 7.30 at the Mulberry House. And this is a dedication to Laura Graff, who's fighting an illness. She's with Graff Bikes. She has given tons to the kids, and the kids want to give back. So that is a great thing. Come and support the kids doing a nice community service. Also, in this room on Thursday, March 8th, will be a free Narcan training. It's through the Middletown Cares Coalition. You just have to call the Recreation Department. We do only have uh, 40 spots avail available for that. It is free because of uh, the help of ADAC and um, the National Guard, and we, we thank them. Um, also, I want to thank the 10K Classic. They donated $1,000 to the Mayor's Youth Council for them to do services in the city, and one of the things that paid for was a bus to go to uh, the state capitol in Albany a couple weeks ago, and the kids got to meet with representatives from our area, and they were actually lobbying for positive youth development money, which we get a, a good piece of that. And every time we go up, I go up there with them, I'm impressed. And um, they get some promises that are followed through on. So we, we thank our dignitaries from this area uh, with the kids. Um, and lastly, uh, our spring programs registration is out. So uh, if you want spring break, spring soccer, all that, you want to stop by the rec office and sign up. That's all I have. Thank you, Chris. Alderman Kleiner. Um, Thank you. You didn't get a chance to speak at our, our last meeting, but um, I know you had just gotten back from Albany, and our youth representative on the uh, Recreation Commission had just gotten back. Would you just say a word about Michael Torres? Yeah, we have a young man named Michael Torres. He's one of the first youth to ever sit on any commission in the city of Middletown. He sits on the Recreation Commission. But he is now the legislative committee head for the county. He sits on the youth advisory board for the Orange County Youth Bureau, which is with the county department heads. And he, he is the legislative committee chair that sets up all the appointments with Gunther and Bonasic and Skoufis and Larkin up at the state capitol. He spent two days up there. The kid is amazing, and he represents this city very, very well. Very proud That's of him. That's why we reappointed him last time. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Corporation Council. Any questions for Richard? Thank you. Mayor, any remarks? No. Remarks of Alderman? Alderman Massey. Good evening. I have a couple things. One, the first one is <clears throat> most of you people on the council got it, but in case there are people out there who are unaware that uh, uh, they're going to have a Black History Month celebration at the YMCA. 6 Liberty Street this Saturday night, February 24th, 7 to 9, and it's an open invitation. Uh, they're going to have uh, poetry, music, fun, some guest speakers. So I just want to throw that out there if you get an opportunity. Hopefully I'll see you there. A second thing <clears throat> on the uh, CPV. 
I appreciate the fact that you people come out and you're impassioned. You give your views. Please do understand that we live in Middletown also. I'm here, I've been here probably longer than just about anyone other than Merritt Winter. Sorry, Merritt. But we understand. We truly do. Yesterday when I woke up and I had that terrible odor, the first thing I did is I text both the mayor and the council president. We got together. We're not, we will do whatever we have to do. But when you come here, understand that you're speaking to people who actually live here in the community too. We represent an awful lot of people. We want the best for everyone. We truly do. So I, I guess making accusations is always not a good way of getting what you want. Working together, hopefully we will be able to facilitate and move forward. We took some immediate action, at least the mayor took immediate action. This council will have to vote on that action. I'm assuming that everyone will uh, vote together for <clears throat> the engineer and the testing. And like the mayor said, hopefully maybe some other communities will uh, join us and defray some of that expense. But we will do it. So we haven't sat back. We didn't wait. We, we moved forward. I, and the last thing, uh, completely different than everything else, uh, unfortunately, the uh, tragedy in Florida. Uh, if there's a silver lining that came out of that, is that each time we have these tragedies, two or three weeks go by, and then people forget about them, except those that are impacted. I think the youth, their movement, those children that are 16, 17, and 18, they're getting involved, and as long as they will stay involved, and I'm hoping our youth will get involved in it, change will be made, because those people in a couple of years will be of voting age, and as long as they remember, there's a lot of power in the vote, a lot of power in numbers. I'm not against the Second Amendment at all. I, I, I don't happen to be a gun owner or a hunter, but I'm not against it at all. What I am against it is assault rifles, and, and I, I don't see any place for them where an 18-year-old can go out and uh, can't obviously uh, go to a bar and have a drink, but he can go out and get a, a is it AK or AR, whatever it is, 15. Uh, I think something has to be done there, and I think the silver lining, once again, is hopefully the youth will get involved and keep this going, because if they don't, what will happen a month from today, we won't hear anything about it, and it will just move on, and then God forbid, there will be another tragedy. Thank you for indulging my time. Alderman Tobin? Uh, I just have an announcement. Uh more Lions Clubs hat. We have a uh, sp uh, fundraiser, a fabulous gourmet spaghetti dinner, March 3rd, Saturday, uh, March 3rd, 4 to 7 p.m. at the Masonic Lodge on North Street. $12 for adults, $6 for children, and the proceeds will benefit the Hospice of Orange and Sullivan Counties and our Middletown Lions charity projects. So please, if you can, come down. Please support the Lions Club and Masonic Lodge uh, spaghetti dinner. As far as uh, the CPV, I, I agree with the mayor, it's totally unacceptable. Uh, I felt like uh, I was being gassed by the, uh, the diesel fumes, like I was in some kind of war movie when I, I went on my porch. I drove around town up to uh, Orange County Community College. It seemed to rest along the uh, Dolson Avenue uh, kind of valley there. Uh, leaves me frustrated. Uh, you know, I wish we could send Jacob down to, you know, shut it down when that happened or put a lock on the gate, but we can't do that. Uh, I called the uh, DEC. Uh, no one was there on the weekends. Uh, left a message. I finally got in touch with someone today, and they told me they couldn't tell me anything, that there was a canned response, that they were looking into it, and that it was a sensitive situation. And that frustrates me. I mean, uh, I wish I would ask them to 
to provide us with more answers. I mean, I would like to let, I would like to know is it safe for the kids to go outside when that's happening, or the kids at Maple Hill to play on the playground, or for the people that called me that have pulmonary issues uh, to be outside when that diesel smoke is happening. Uh, I think it's something that could have been, like the mayor said, could have been avoided. Uh, and I would ask CPV to stop using the diesel. Uh, that was horrible. Uh, it's unfair for our residents. And, you know, uh, this isn't the bill of goods I think anybody was sold. I went read back through the minutes, looked through the newspaper, and never heard that we'd be subject to these diesel fumes. Uh, and so hopefully we can, the CP, I mean, uh, CPV and the DEC can do a better job. And I'm, I have full support of monitoring the air quality coming out of the plant. Thank you. Alderman Green. Thank you. Um, I, too, will support uh, anything we can do in terms of monitoring. Um, you know, I believe that if we have our own agency as well, uh, you know, it's sort of a uh, check and balance. So I'll support that going forward. Um, uh, just a note, we had our second board uh, constituents meeting uh, last Monday. Um, even though it was a holiday uh, in the city, we were uh, here. And we had some good participation. We uh, asked anyone to come out to them. And uh, we try to announce them the week, uh, the meeting before we have them. Also, just uh, following uh, Mr. Massey there, um, as the son, brother, son-in-law, husband of educators, somehow I didn't get in that mix, um, you know, the fact that I see my own family members have to go to school every day with the thought in their back of their heads that, you know, anything can happen at any time. It's a scary thought, um, and seeing these tragedies occur just makes it uh, that more real. Um, so, you know, I do hope and I do see hope in the youth that are speaking out. Um, I sure know that at uh, the, their age, I don't know if I'd be able to say on live TV that hopes and prayers are not enough, but uh, you know, I hope that we can see some good come out of that. Thank you. Alderman Johnson. Thank you. Uh, with respect to the CPV comments, I certainly uh, appreciate all the input of all of you who took the time to come out this evening. Um, there's lots of room for good communication. I think it's a, it's a true fact that so far CPV has not really established itself as a trustworthy organization, and they have a lot of homework to do. Uh, at 10.42 this morning, I called the mayor and said, well, what exactly are we going to do about diesel and people not feeling well going to the supermarket at ShopRite on Dolson Avenue? And he said, we're having a meeting at 11 o'clock, and we're going to address some of these issues. So um, whether you have to call the DEC and get a canned response on Saturday at 4 o'clock, uh, in my world, if I can log on to our own website, and hopefully within 24 to 48 hours know what exactly was going on, and if, it's, if it looks like that again, do I have to stay indoors uh, or do I not have to, you know, be out in my backyard? I think that is going to be progress. And I think if we can, I won't say hold their feet to the fire, probably not a good phrase, but if we can keep them honest and know that we're watching. And I do think that um, the way we onto does have a responsibility to join us. And really, in my world, they would, you, you, they would be the leaders in this conversation. Um, nothing against anybody, but... We are taking on the responsibility to monitor air quality for people in many different municipalities in our area because any, any given day the wind can go in any given direction. With respect to um, the Orange Classic, um, Alderman Kleiner and I happened to be at the dinner as, as along with Brink and um, it was uh, news to me that the gift keeps on giving. Um, our organization was one of many that received donations that were proceeds from the race and it was, uh, it was a great evening. It was an ice storm, and it was about 20% of the anticipated participation, but it was a nice evening. With respect to Parkland, I will just say I share the sentiments of Alderman Massey and Alderman Green, and hopefully something good will come out of something that's very bad. Thank you. Good evening. Um, first, I'd just like to start with a little um, informational. Um, the third ward meeting will be next Tuesday. Uh, that's the 27th, and that's here. Uh, in the caucus room at uh, 7 p.m. Um, just a correction for the record, I believe in prior weeks when we were referring to the citywide cleanup, 
coming up in April that we were referring to as happening on April 23rd. That is incorrect. That Saturday is actually April 21st. So if you have it written down wrong, please correct that. Um, I appreciate everyone who came out tonight to speak about CPV. Um, I'm a mom of four children. Um, I'm going to say this on the record, but I agree with, with Alderman Massey tonight. You know, we, we live here. We have families. Um, and I don't worry less about my children. Um, I moved to this state, this community, after this deal was in place. And I'm assuming that was to their benefit to be get the work done, get everything in place, and then be quiet about it until it was time to start building it. Because why would you draw attention to that? on a daily basis. So it was new information to me, you know, when I was on the council and we were presented with the water deal. Um, again, um, I'll just, I've said this before and I'll say it again just on the record that, you know, I don't, I don't appreciate the statements that somehow the vote to provide gray water was a gatekeeper on a project of this scale. Um, you know, whether or not they were able to acquire deals with other communities of a similar fashion, a project, a billion dollar project is not being held up by the fact that we're providing them gray water. They were going to get water from somewhere. You know, they're going to pull it out of the ground. They would have piped to the Delaware probably. I'm telling you right now that that does not preclude anyone here who voted in favor of that from caring about what's pumping out of those smokestacks right now. Um, yes, I'm concerned about it. I have little kids, you know. Um, and I think I appreciate with the mayor the steps that he's taken to ask these questions. But, you know, as he said, this isn't our plan. So we can ask questions, and I certainly intend to fund anything we can do to, to keep an eye on what's coming out of those stacks. Um, but we lack the power as a community, as a board. And that's not to say that I don't echo your efforts and, uh, about I don't, even, I don't even know the word to use. My disappointment, disapproval of, of what I'm seeing when I cross over the hill on County Route 78 and I see those plumes coming out into the sky, it's, it's not what I moved to the Hudson Valley for, I'll tell you that. Um, and I'm not happy with its location, but again, I wasn't privy to that conversation. And that was well in the works before I even came to this community. Um, we'll do the best we can with what we've got. And what we've got right now is the capacity to fund studies and monitor what's happening and to, to do what we can to, to protect our residents from, from what's pumping into the air as, as best we can. I mean, we have certain legal limitations. We're not a, a you know a vigilante board here. We just go crazy and chain those gates. It's not our community. So I, I, I support the mayor and his efforts uh, to monitor this. Um, I certainly intend to support funding um, the, the CDM. So. Uh, and I, and I appreciate, I pre appreciate every citizen who's, who's, who's voicing their concerns here about this. Um, so I thank you for coming out tonight and I thank you for speaking. And that's all I have. Alderman Kleiner. Um, thank you. Uh, I wanna first welcome Merritt Winter back to the volunteer firefighter recruiting business. He's a recruiter par excellence. We have missed him and we really need him. And so I, I thank you very much for being back on the job. Um, <clears throat> at the rec commission meeting, uh, our chairman, Dave Bechtel, stopped in the middle of the meeting because he had to leave early. He had to leave early because one of the volunteers couldn't make it to the warming station. The warming station can't open unless they have two volunteers, so Dave stayed. He and Marilyn have been doing that any time they get stuck or someone doesn't show up. So if there's a chance, you know, there's another month and a half, two months of cold weather. Um, if you can, go to middletownwarmingstation.com and you can sign up to volunteer. If you haven't been trained, they can pair you up with somebody who's a volunteer for a long time and you'll get on the job training. But um, we certainly could use it and, and people like Dave are just amazing in awe of him. Um, I hope we can do another electronic drop-off day this year. I don't know if there are any companies taking electronic waste, but I know that the county has stopped, and I hear that Best Buy has stopped taking TV, so it's something I ask that we look into. Um, Kate did mention that April 21st, 
is our citywide pride cleanup and uh, we'll be distributing these flyers around town and hopefully we had a great turnout last year if we can match that this year we'll really be doing well um, <clears throat> My communications committee will be meeting uh, on March 6 at 6.30 p.m. and we will be talking about the, trying to create a city ID for Middletown residents. So ask anybody interested to come out and we're gonna try and really firm that up and get some specifics as to how we're gonna do that. Um, There was a gentleman at the 10K dinner who talked about mental health. He's been in the mental health field for many years and, and been a leader, and I liked what he had to say. He said, I wish just one year that mental health would get absolutely all the funding it needs and that the military would have to have bake sales and sell cookies to raise money. Uh, it, it does talk about our priorities, and uh, I, I liked it, you know, my parents basically devoted their lives to uh, mental health issues. Um, CPV, I'm, really, oh, let me see one more thing. Uh, oh, we lost power in half our house last night. So I'm a little groggy, up late, up early. But I have to tell you that the ONR crews that came out to the house, they were just absolutely terrific. I mean, the workers, they were so good and and they got us back online the other half of the house but the onr rate increase request not so much <laughs> and i don't know how many people are paying attention to that but they do have a rate increase request and they say we haven't had a rate increase for three years well that's very deceptive in my memory unless i'm not remembering it correctly when when two or three years ago they got a rate increase for every year for the next three years. So there has not been a year that they've been without a rate increase. And they say they'll give back some of their tax windfall from the new tax bill, but uh, I'll believe that when I see it. So when that comes up, if there are any public hearings around here, I'd really like to hear them justify what the need is for the rate increase. Um, CPV, you know, Many years ago in Wawayanda at the town board when it was first presented, I went with the NAACP and we went and we talked about the issue of environmental justice. We talked about the emissions that would not fall on Wawayanda, but would cross 17M and fall on the fourth ward in Middletown, particularly a lot of our low income areas and how that monster was so inappropriate for this little area. And we tried, or a lot of people spoke up and tried, but you were fighting powers that had determined that it was gonna happen. Um, I wrote last July to the attorney for the uh, activists, and I said, Michael, a quick question. If CPV starts up as scheduled, or any time next year, do you know what the provisions are for monitoring air quality? Who monitors the monitors? And will anyone be prepared to do independent air samples? Thanks for any info. And no one really had an answer for that. And I'm just going to finish with one thing because, <clears throat> you know, the county tried, and I think Mr. Scoofus put a resolution in in the state to try and get the county to have more authority over these little home rule municipalities that can do something like this to a whole county. And it failed, it failed at the state level. People, you gotta vote. You gotta vote for the people who wanna change it. Um, my, when they had the uh, hearing for the Millennial Pipeline last year, I just wrote a very quick email as an official comment on the site. And I said, I understand this application has to do with the ability to meet specific guidelines under New York State law for protection of water and wetlands and proper pollutant and stormwater controls. <clears throat> but I find it disappointing that it has been determined that it is not subject to CP29, environmental justice, because that is a major concern for the residents of the Fourth Ward in Middletown and also the greater Middletown, Town of Wallkill area. 
It's also disturbing that the DEC, according to much of the expert testimony that has been presented, does not consider methane when evaluating permits and discharges. If this is in fact the case, it makes the entire permitting process invalid in terms of protecting public health and safety. I also have asked what the process would be for monitoring all the conditions of the various permits that have been issued. So far, I have been told that there are no provisions for DEC monitoring of discharges and the various pollutants. Again, if this is the case, it would make the permits and the regulations meaningless. I continue to oppose this project on the grounds of environmental justice for my constituents. Gerald Kleiner, Second Ward Alderman. Jonathan Slaw. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, think, I thank everybody that came out tonight and, and, and spoke. And we do have a lot of concerns, and, and, and we listen to your concerns. We listen to your input. Even before tonight this meeting take place, we had asked me, because I'm the, I'm the alderman for the fourth quarter. I'm the closest one that lives to the plant, and I have a lot of concerns, and I, and I have children also. And my neighbors are concerned. They asked a lot of questions. That's why we let we asked, actually asked the mayor to set up a special meeting to speak with the representative, which is taking place next month. Just us and CPV and their representatives, because we have a lot of questions that haven't been answered. Also, so I understand your concern. I just I, I guarantee you. Most of your concerns or your issues would not go in deaf ears. I have a list of questions that I'm willing to answer these people, ask them when they come, when we have our meeting with them. So just, we, we fighting for you, and we fighting for our lives, we fight for everybody. It will not go in deaf ears. Thank you for coming, appreciate it. As far as the potholes, I'd be DPW, the commissioner, and, and his crew, they're being very responsive. And every morning when I drive around the city and I'll call DPW, I'll call the commissioner, and this is a pothole, a certain area. By the time I come back from home, it's already been taken care of. They're taking that very serious. Any pothole, it doesn't have to be in your neighborhood. It could be anywhere in the city. They will take care of it. Please call the number. Check the website and call the number. It will be taken care of. Thank you. Alman Burr. Thank you. I also like to thank for everybody coming out tonight, and um, on CPV, obviously everybody's concerned, but uh, we have open government here. Anybody can come up here and say anything they want to this mic, and we listen to them. You know, we don't say, you know, we get off. You know, we give you your four minutes, and we listen. And the mayor tries to address everything he can. On on that fact, I mean, as we say, it's not our project. I was on it when we took the uh, 500,000 gallons that they wanted in Great Water under the stipulation is it wasn't if we didn't give them the water there was no project like alderman ram kassoon said it's you know it's out of our hands basically but we you know we're going to have air quality we're going to spend money cdm who it's a very reputable company is going to monitor they built our water plants they built our sewer plants we have a lot of confidence in their ability and uh i'm in full support of any costs we have to do thank you Thank you. Tonight we had about 16 people come up to the mic. I thank everyone. I thank every city resident for coming and addressing. I wish I could record my phone um, yesterday morning when I got the phone call, the text message, the Facebook messages about the concerns. We seen it, I seen it, the mayor seen it. I wanna thank the mayor for his leadership. We got on it, we called C, um, CDM, we, we're, we're looking for anybody. CDM's out of New York City to air monitor. Um, I do have to apologize for Scott Martens for yelling at you, but it's, um, I, know, I understand your passion, and I know you're concerned for, for, this, for your residents and for what you, you're going through. Um, in 2003, I ran for office, and we had Calpine, Masada, Chartwell, and now CPV. Every couple of years, something comes up, and um, you know I ran. I didn't have to choose to live in Middletown. I have my house here, my kid, four kids here, and I ran for those concerns. I don't want to live in a chart well where it's hauling garbage every day. I don't want Masada for taking garbage and making ethanol. 
I didn't want Calpine, but the environmental groups wanted Calpine because they want to close Indian Point, and they wanted clean, natural gas. Then the F word came out, which is the fracking. Fracking made it a problem. We understand the problem. I understand the concerns. I would not approve of, uh, or allow CPV to be built in the city of Middletown. I'm here. I feel the same way. I think Pilgrim Estates is lower, and we get it, and it stayed in our neighborhood. We, we're out there. We're seeing it. I almost said, can I catch it and, and reuse the diesel smell? I can smell it. Um, you know, I, I thank everybody for your attending. Um, again, public um, meetings. I started this. I started live TVs. I put the cameras in here I, for everybody's concern. Everybody at home knows. We allow it. Come up here. Please don't come up here and try to attack, blame, blame us for everything. 95% of us right here voted for providing the water to CPV in 2013. If you were in office in 2013, you voted to provide water to CPV to cool their turbines and everything. It's not about that. If they were going to do it regardless, they were going to do it. Either take it out of our, the wells and, and, and drain the water out there, or, or buy it from the town. You can come up here, you can say what's this, what, what the middle town is going to be affected by it. I see it. I live here. Um, comments, you know, I, I see a lot of the comments and I'm reading it and it goes back with the history and, um, and everything <coughs> that all the concerns. Yes, we are concerned. Yes, we are concerned for public safety. Yes, we want to monitor the companies and pay whatever we got to pay. We don't lack leadership. We hear your concerns, and we will take it. We will fight. I will fight. If we have to, I'm not, I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming where they said they were going to dump diesel. Today we asked them, can you stop doing the diesel? It's not going to work. This is not working for anybody. So again, please come up here. You're all welcome. And you've got four minutes to address this council, but we're here to make sure that our residents, we're our businesses, we hear a lot of complaints from our businesses on Dolson Avenue. Everybody knows at 9 o'clock, Dolson Avenue is dead. No business is going to come down on Dolson Avenue if, if this is going to happen. We are pushing. We received over $37 million of grants to make Middletown better. And we keep pushing, we keep applying, and we're not going to. Even if I have to put some kind of fan and push it back on them or something, we're going we're gonna to work on it. You know, we're going to monitor it. And um, I, I, I think you're, you, you're coming up here. I like this. Meetings to 10 o'clock, I'm all for it. But come up here and address the council, and please don't attack. Thank you. New business. Sponsored by Alderman Johnson. I'd just oh. like to respond to Mr. Kleiner's environmental justice uh, with the um, comments to make sure that uh, well, well, I appreciate his comments that he wrote a letter to the attorney for the, um, for the people who were opposed to CPV, but the 2002 envi or 2012 environmental re uh, report issued by the Waukeo Planning Board had five pages. On, envir on, on environmental justice and how it affects the city of Middletown. So I think the more appropriate thing, again, is rather than write Mr. Sussman a letter, maybe you should have asked this board or maybe you should have attended that public hearing on the planning board issue to give your testimony about environmental justice. But the town of Way Weyanda planning board drew a conclusion on that. It wasn't that it wasn't looked at. You're not the only one that asked them to look at it. Way we on to ask them to look at it. And the planning board there came up with a five page comment on environmental justice, specifically as it impacted on the city of Middletown. So again, the comments need to be directed to the appropriate bodies. And the appropriate body was not Mike Sussman. The appropriate body would have been this board, this board, way we on the board, and any other board that was reviewing the project. New business. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson. Resolution determining that the proposed City of Middletown purchase of the 13 buildings in land at 122 Dorothea Dix Drive and on listed action and will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment. 
Brothers responsible, Oman Johnson, seconded by Oman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Alderman Kasoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jim Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution to authorize the treasurer to add $5,000 of the solutions funding to be added to the Too Good for Drugs and Violence Budget Grant expense line for use in 2018. Resolution responsible by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. Aye. Resolution passes. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr. Resolution to authorize the mayor to sign the summer youth employment program work site contract with the County of Orange to obtain summer youth workers. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Ma'am Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President <coughs> Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin. Resolution to accept a donation from the classic 10K road race in the amount of $1,000 and deposit into the existing trust and agency account for the Mayor's Youth Council. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Alderman Johnson. I'll ask the clerk to use the microphone a little bit more effectively. Thank you. Discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. Resolution to authorize the purchase of a board and batten shed mini barn in the amount of $1,760 for the fire department and transfer the funds within the DPW 2018 budget. Resolution responsible, Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey. Resolution to authorize the issuance of, of 684,000 serial bonds to pay the the cost of the purchase of a fire truck and equipment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution, <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr. Resolution to accept a donation from the CSCA retiree local 917 in the amount of $100 and deposit into the existing trust and agency account summer camp scholarships. Resolution responsible, Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Ma'am Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. 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 <clears throat> Sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois. Resolution to declare the Common Council lead agency for the purpose of CECRA for the Municipal Separate Storm Sewer System Comprehensive System Mapping GIS project. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois. Resolution to accept the uh, Water Quality Improvement Program State Assistance Award of $128,887 for the mapping GIS project and authorize the mayor to sign all related paperwork for grant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Rope. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois. 
Resolution to declare the Common Council lead agency in making a de negative declaration for purposes of CEQA for the land acquisition for water, for a source water protection project. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Fitzwatt, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. And Fassoon. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Matthew. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Fitzwatt. Resolution to accept the Water Quality Improvement Program State Assistance Award of $3,056,565 for the land acquisition for source water protection projects and authorize the mayor to sign all related paperwork for the grant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Fitzwatt. Seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Mayor Kassoum. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Francois. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Resolution passes. That's all for resolution. We just passed a resolution for $3 million to make water sources green forever to protect our water source, to drinking water. Outside the city, all the way around. $3 million, right there. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be ordered that the claims be adjusted and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for the payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, second by Alderman Johnson. Roll. Aye. Tobin. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Aye. Burr. Aye. Green. Aye. Massey. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Move, Sir Dermot. Aye. 